Well, despite a challenging business environment and a strong Aussie dollar, serviced offices operator Surfcorp has clocked in more than 8 million Aussie dollars for the first half profit. While it remains bullish on China and says it plans to hedge against slowing markets and global volatility through a structural change in focus for its business strategy. And earlier I spoke to Surfcorp's chief operating officer, Marcus Mufarij. He tells us more about the plans to slow the pace of expansion and the impact on profit growth this year. Yeah, there was somewhat of a perfect storm uh, when the global financial crisis came for us, uh, a global storm of opportunity, if you like, to expand quite dramatically as commercial rents around the world were, were quite heavily um, impacted. And that opened an opportunity for us in the US, and it was the combination of the, the, the lowered rents and a point of development that we were at with our technology to build the, the Surfcorp Global Network Platform that said it was time for us to scale our business up. And so we've done that. And, uh, you know, in terms of buying at the bottom of the market, I think we've done that pretty effectively. It's probably taking a little bit longer than we expected for the market to rise off the bottom. And I think everybody's in the same boat in that regard. Uh, so, you know, we think it's, it's good for us to consolidate the profits around those centres that we've expanded, particularly across the USA and also um, with some locations in the Middle East, uh, and have a look and, and choose specific markets that we think have, uh, you know, present a lot of opportunity. So if Corp also operates in 21 uh, countries across the world, um, how do you manage the forex volatility and also the strength of the Aussie dollar? You obviously don't collect rent in Aussie dollars. Expanding in the US um, with a strong Aussie dollar is, is a good thing because our losses in the US might, aren't as great as they might be. Um, and I think that, you know, if you look at that as, as a natural hedge, if the, if the Aussie dollar then contracts in, in the next 12 months or 24 months, we're going to look like fantastic currency managers, but that's part of the operations of the business. Um, I also think that because there's a strong relationship in the currency trades between Australia and Japan, um, you know, they're our two biggest markets and so we've had to, to work with that over an extended period of time with the way that the, the, Jap the, the strength of the Japanese yen and, and now the strength of the Australian dollar. So I think it's, uh, we can put it down to experience. There are also expectations of uh, a slowdown uh, from the US, Europe and even in China. Um, how are you adjusting to the changing economic climates in these countries and are there also other regions uh, that you think might uh, kind of uh, compensate for that slowdown? I'm quite bullish on China and so I think that you know our, our focus will shift um, from uh, from Australia and Japan and putting a bit more emphasis on China but we still haven't quite cracked the China nut and I think a lot of people are, are facing that challenge but I think that that, that presents our, our greatest opportunity moving forward. Uh, on, from, from a structural change in the business, Surfcorp has transformed itself from being a property company and just selling um, offices on a short-term basis, uh, buying it on a long-term basis and sh selling it on a short-term basis, to really being a technology services company. And, and I think that that transformation is, is what is going to protect us moving, in, moving forward as there continues to be downward pressure on commercial real estate because the serviced office business is very affected, uh, very cyclical. But the virtual office business is, is much less cyclical. So um, we've, we've found that you know, by transforming our business from a property company to a technology company and investing in our, in our global network um, and essentially becoming a cloud voice provider to many, many SMEs, 35,000 small to medium enterprises and and teleworkers around the world, um, we're finding that that is actually uh, probably the best way to, to tackle the challenges that lie in the, in the new normal economy.